All right, welcome to another On My Block Packers podcast. I'm your host, Mike Wall. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're enjoying, please subscribe, rate, and review on our Process to Perform YouTube channel. YouTube.com backslash backslash process. I'm your host, Mike Wall. You can find me at Mike Wall68 on Twitter, Process to Perform, and Instagram. Our show is sponsored by Bet Online AG. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, esports, football, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting on your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get into the action. And remember to use your promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game. Starts and we don't have a well, we have a game, but we already did our review because we lost on Thursday night to the Lions. So I wanted to take Monday and just spend a couple of minutes. You know, one of the biggest problems we have is the run game. Obviously, for if you're a Green Bay Packers player, coach, organization member, or fan, we're averaging 3.3 yards a carry right now. Um, and if you take out Jordan Love's four and a half yards a carry, Keyshawn Nixon had one rush for 11 yards. Um, Aaron Jones has 4.2 yards a carry, which is below average but it's better than you know anything else we got. But you know, poor A.J. Dillon's at, at uh, 2.7. The league average is always somewhere around like 4.5 for the last couple of years now. So you think 3.3, 4.5, you're actually a long ways away. And all I wanted to do today was just go through the last game versus a good Detroit Lions team, it was a physical team, in, you know, divisional opponent, and kind of figure out what exactly is going on uh, in the run game. Is it a is it a scheme thing? Is it an execution thing? Situationally, are we playing the right? Are we playing smart ball? Does our quarterback have the option to get out of bad plays, etc.? Um, so let's just go through this stuff and just see what we can find here. So the first thing we see is we're in, we're in uh, twelve personnel, two tight ends, one running back, and you've got the, the tight end to the left is hipped off, which suggests historically that he's going to go backside from that position. He at least has the option to. We don't have a lot of runs that you're going to have some sort of slip or scoop block play side between the, the left tight end and the left tackle up to the up to 37. So unless we think that we're going to try to capture the edge by blocking that tight end who's off the line of scrimmage on their, their stand-up outside linebacker defensive end, chances are that this is going to be uh, a play that might start to the left, but it has every possibility to bend back to the right. We just look at the, some of the really basic stuff. Your left tackle and left guard, there's a huge split between them. Um, everybody else has a pretty standard split. You say, you know, left guard, center, right guard, actually smaller, right tackle, right guard's a little bit bigger, tight end's really close to the, the backside. That tells me that the tight end on the backside is worried about not getting to his cutoff spot, reinforcing the idea that this, this ball is probably being handed off to the left of the quarterback. We got the split flow motion. You're going backwards. As we watch this play, where do you where do you have problems? Well, it looks like a couple things. One, if we're going back, Royce is going to take a good first step. His hands are wide, so he's going to get pressed on his chest. So he's going to get stood up in the hole. You have John Runyon Jr. is going to step behind himself and. And Myers is climbing quick, so we're not really taking care of the down lineman here. He climbs through fast, and the down lineman's going sideways now, so that's not a bad thing, but he does have leverage and is kind of forcing the jump cut back to the backside A gap. And then Musgrave steps underneath himself on the backside, so Zach Tom takes his footwork to work that backside C up to the, the linebacker where he can hold off and wait. They get a good job, and really this play works because the tight end and Zach Tom, even though they don't make the play on the linebackers, that gets pushed off because there's bad angles. They're basically fighting each other on the backside. There is a lane there, at least for AJ to put his head down and run through that linebacker, but they've pushed that guy two, three yards off the line of scrimmage. Obviously, the play side tight end went backside, and you turn around and you get a four-yard gain. Not a great start, but not a bad start. Now we're just back to 11 personnel. Tight ends hipped off on the other side. It looks like from where I'm standing right now, I could be wrong, that Musgrave can't go across split flow here because just how he's lined up. These are things that defenses see, by the way. I'm saying this stuff. I'm pointing it out to you. Defenses see this. 
So this is the gap play. They're running kind of a, a, a setter or a counter play where they're going to have the tight end release inside. Royce Newman's going to come over and try to block Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden actually makes an amazing play here. But here's what's kind of nuts about this play. You see the path of A.J. Dillon. And A.J. has got a three technique to this side. And usually you're going to try to run this ball off of the tackles, the right tackle. So Zach does a good job of stepping down. But once you take that hard angle down, it's hard to rise up and get to the second level. So you've compromised your ability to get to the second level by trying to take care of the down defender. You see the tight end is left, is, is kind of gotten beaten side by Anzalone. So that there's really nowhere for AJ to go. And then, of course, Aiden kind of matrix moved Royce Newman inside. So now AJ's got to take a hop outside and try to make something out of this play. My only observation here is that just from, and I'm sure if, if, if I talked to Amani, he'd say the same thing, is the handoff is to go to the A-gap here. That doesn't really make sense. It leaves him very optionless. If you handed this ball off with of the intentions to go to the B-gap, where the three technique is, and you're going to move off the spot, now you can cut left or right off of that block. That seems to make a little more sense in the way that, first of all, the way that A.J. Dillon runs, and then, two, the way that the, the scheme set up to be successful. So a play that you know had some promise doesn't work out. Now we're back to that 12 personnel. You've got Luke Musgrave on the left. I don't know if we're calling DeGuara a tight end or, a, or it could be 21 or 12. But we got him hipped off on the right. He's off the line of scrimmage. He can go into motion, and he does. And now we're trying to run the lead play with the backside guard pulling. And we have it, what's different than, for this play than, than maybe some others is that you lead with, you're leading with your full back or your tight end. So let's start with uh, 88 Musgrave over. So we're inside release. When you inside release and you actually turn your shoulders and you try to get skinny like he's doing, you allow that defensive end to push you down and collapse the hole. What you'd like to see is him to get the second step in the ground and kind of fight through this block and then make a hard right turn and have a car accident with Anzalone if he decides to shoot the gap. But when you just go down and let the defensive end ride it down, a little bit easier to block. Dewar does a good job of, of meeting the man where he's at. John Runyon Jr. is coming around to block the linebacker. And now we're just pushing the pile. Aaron Jones is pushing the pile off to Guara. Anzalone can't quite get there, so I think we get a couple good yards here. End up coming off of Rasheed Walker's uh, block. So as you'll see, we've run three plays here. And the running backs are working hard to get four yards. It's, it hasn't been easy sledding. There's no gaping holes, and there are holes that get filled up fast. We've got our two backs in the backfield. 81 is clearly going from left to right here in a split flow kind of motion. They show the dive. Interesting here that everyone's got a gap to fill. You see Aiden Hutchinson is crashing down, expecting DeGuara to block him. They immediately react. This is the option play that we've seen already. Brian Branch beats, I think that's Dobbs outside, gets to the quarterback, and then DeGuara can't quite get all the way out in time to hit the pitch man. This play is doomed from the beginning, really, when Dobbs doesn't make that crack block on Brian Branch right here. The speed of the Detroit Lions is a problem, but you could be pitching off of the corner and have DeGuara lead on Anzalone versus having to pitch off Brian Branch and having two on two. You've got a two tight end look. Both players are hipped off. Tucker Kraft looks like, if I was guessing, would be the one that's going backside just based on how he's lined up. You see the splits are all pretty uniform here. Three-point stances. So we got the pull play. And this is one of the plays that Lee McNeil beats us through on the backside. So Josh Myers is supposed to take a step to the three technique and pin him. Zach Tom needs to step all the way down into the B gap and put his body in the way so McNeil can't slide through the B gap as it's being as John Rennie Jr. is going to be pulling. 
Tucker Graff's going to be following him. So we just saw kind of a less traditional let the fullback or tight end lead and the guard follows through it. The guard's going to lead on this one, and then the tight end's going to be on the backside of the guard following through on the play. Because two things. We have a, a, a poor footwork demonstration by Zach Tom not stepping down and just giving him a hand. And really, Josh Myers does take a step, but you got to go somewhere with your footwork. Takes a bad angle. McNeil jumps the snap, does a good job, probably indicating that he knows the puller is pulling. He shoots the gap and ends up blowing up this play. Tucker Craft tries to do something with it, but there's nothing happening. Now we have a tackle for loss. So that's the second tackle for loss we've seen. Tucker Craft here on the backside is hipped off with some depth. Again, the obvious thought process when I'm saying this for the for the defense is my guess is Tucker Kraft's not going to be there when the ball snapped. And my guess is he's going to leave, which means that 63 probably has to come out and block the defensive end, which means that the defensive tackle is probably going to be blocked by Royce Newman. And it's going to be a play side block. In other words, this all tells a story. And now you can run play action off this. You can run play action off of anything. You can run the, the option off this. So the split flow, the counter to the argument of, you know, you're tipping by your stance, you're tipping by your formation is, well, we can run all these different plays off of it. And it's like, well, okay, but we can run our defense to predicate uh, that we're going to stop this play and we can fall into the other things, just understanding what your options are and are not. Like, for example, we know looking at this right here, that if you try to crack block with Watson, you, you have a problem. If you try to do any kind of play side block with Tucker Craft here, and he's off the line of scrimmage by a yard, and he's a tight end playing a, an outside linebacker or defensive end. They don't have the skill set to do that, so you have a problem. So the the obvious thing for this this Lions defense is well, the the ball is going to the flow is going to be to the left. The split flow on tight end is going to come back to the our right. The defense is left, and they're going to look for a hole for Aaron Jones on a double team between uh, either the center and the, and the backside right guard, or the center is going to step play side to the left guard. So that's exactly what happens. As you see here with, with Myers, Myers has taken one heck of an angle considering that Anzalone's damn near head up on him. And we're handing this ball off on the backside uh, of the of the actual play design. So Jordan loves opening to his right, handing the ball underneath, and you see where the hole possibly could be is between the two guards here. Myers has has made it so that Anzalone could run right through that hole if he chose so chose to do. So not much there. This is a tough block for John Runyon Jr. I mean, this is what a guard does for a living two eye block having to kind of force him to either get washed down or just hold him in place, being able to vertically drive him. This is an inside zone play. So is your hat, right? Is your outside hand winning? I'm talking about your backside right hand. Or are you, are you getting locked out? Are you position blocking? Have you reset the line of scrimmage in a positive way or not? So right now, if you're looking at this and you're Aaron Jones, you're thinking, I don't really have a hole. If I try to go inside the left of Runyon, he's getting pushed back. I'm going to have to jump. I'm jump cut early. Anzalone's got a free shot because Myers has taken a poor angle. And I'm probably going to have to hope that Tucker Craft has some sort of collision with the backside defensive end, Agent Hutchinson, and make something happen here just from high athleticism. So he ends up with a two or three yard gain. Now you got Watson with his inside foot up. So he's going to try to crack block. You see that, uh, you see that Deguara is back, but now he's actually wide as well. So usually when he's going backside, he's not a yard away from the, the, the tackle. So again, you're just telling stories here. So you've got this bunch lineup with uh, 11, 9, and 81, tip of the spear being number nine. Why is, he, why is he split like that? Well, Well, he's probably trying to crack block. Okay, why is 81 wider than normal, but he's still deep? Well, he's probably trying to – I mean, these are things that, again, it's just – 
it's easy to read. And I'm not saying it's easy to read on film. I'm saying is when you're sitting, if you've watched a ton of film and you see this, you automatically go, oh, this is probably what's going on here. At least you have an indicator. Okay. This, this ends up being a good run. It's a quick toss to Aaron Jones. But you see the defensive end actually knocks Rasheed Walker off a little bit here. Or I should say uh, Watson knocks him off a little bit. Rasheed does a good job of getting out. DeGuar does a good, good job of getting out and just getting hands on. All you have to do is get their shoulder pads turned towards the sideline side and get hands on. Let Aaron Jones do his thing. Great block by DeGuar on the, on the side here. And then this is a terrible call. I mean, we'll take it. But, you know, I don't know where the NFL is going with that. So now we've got we've got uh, 12 personnel again, two tight ends in the game. we got Watson coming down. You see that a little bit tighter split between the left tackle and the left guard. That tells a story. That tells a story. What does it tell? Probably that they're going the other way because the left tackle is worried about getting beat. You have a bigger split between the center right guard, the, the right tackle and the right guard. Tells a story. What is that story? The story is that if the right tackle has a large split, he's not worried about getting beat backside. So what happens? And this is kind of in vogue now with the uh, not only the Packers, but a lot of teams. So they're running everybody to the right, and then they're going to hand the ball off essentially to the left, and they want the hole to be in that crease between – kind of the center and the tight end here. We'll see where that we move that backside three technique and see what happens. Now, what's imperative then? That 89 get to Ancelotti in the hole and that we do something on the backside B between Rasheed Walker and, and Royce Newman. You have to get up. You have to get up to your linebacker. You can't get up if you take a drop step and you bury your head into this B block like Rashid Walker's doing, he's turned his body. And again, you're kind of fighting each other. If you think, if you just think about, you know, force, you'd want to see, you know, 70 and 63 be like this pushing forward. But what you're seeing is 70 and 63 pushing like this. So they're veering off. And now what happens is Walker's not a good enough athlete. Nobody is to redirect. If 55, the middle linebacker wants to sit in this hole now, well, he's going to sit in the hole. And now you got nowhere to go. And it's not for any other reason than the left guard and the left tackle have just turned their shoulders to the sideline and they're pushing this down. They think they're doing a great job, but if you can't get to the second level on the goal line, I mean, there's nothing else stopping the, the linebacker from making a play. You look at Zach Tom on the other side. And again, this is all fixable, right? It's just, you can't allow it because that's just, they've, we've shown enough reps, even in this small sample size that they're prone to do this on talking about the, the combination blocks. So Zach Tom kind of gets caught, I think a little bit with the speed of play here. So he's in a bad body position right now to allow this player to go inside. And they make a good play on the ball. This is all we got. We got 11 personnel. You see that uh, DeGuara is off. He's in a position, he's looking across, suggesting that he's going to go across. They've got seven in the box. They're showing now with the safety coming down that 53 is going to come inside. So what needs to happen over here if they're going to run to the left, which I believe they are with a lead blocker here. Okay, so they're going to bring Deguar over. What needs to happen is there needs to be some sort of like triple call between the center, the left guard, and the left tackle. And all that triple call means that is that we're going to just pass all this off. Royce is now just going to take it right on the chest. And instead of being the attacker, he kind of gets stood up in this hole. Because you, you're playing with your hands outside, you're playing tall, you're not coming to this with a good hip hinge, hands tight, ready to strike and extend, punch with through your hips and have your feet chase your hips. And so now DeGuar is looking at this play, like where am I supposed to go? He's kind of taking the hole. Guar slows down. Now Aaron Jones has to make a hard cut, which he does, and gets north and south and gets something out of nothing. But the reality is this play shows all you have to do is this is like when you make this call in the huddle. If the safety comes down to the end right here, you see him. It's an alert, okay? 
and you might just make a we used to make a brilliant call and that just means all the linemen are just going to step hard to their left now so that means that Zach Tom is going to take the three technique. John Rennie Jr. is going to take the, the, the spiking two eye. The center is going to go up for the linebacker on the backside linebacker. We're talking now. Royce and, and Rashid are going to take those, those two outside, the defensive end and the, and the safety. And now you have DeGuara lining up on Ancelotti. This, this could be out the gate if you communicate and execute. Because any, we've talked about it numerous times on the show. Anytime you slant, Anytime you bring extra people and you're able to cut them off, if you're able to account for them, there's nobody home. In other words, one person has to mistake on make a mistake on defense and Aaron, Aaron Jones can exploit it. What they're banking on is, and what shows up here is, Royce Newman gets plugged in the hole, uh, gets plugged right in the B gap by, I think that's Charles Harris. And then they're not able to get up on the second level because – the center and the right guard and the right tackle haven't communicated. This needs to be kind of a bring it call where everybody rotates up. So you see Josh Myers, instead of trusting that John will be there, he's turns his body the wrong direction instead of just running up, you know, getting North and South and running through this block. And now 55 has got a free shot on your running back. He ends up making the play because of course he's going to make the play. So this is kind of an easy run and call. You're down in the red zone, empty backfield. They got four down linemen. You see that uh, Aiden Hutchinson is – we're going to count him in the count. Now they're going to run a quarterback draw. Probably the best run of the night. And I believe they go for a two-point here. So we've already kind of seen the speed. You already can tell that – Outside, I think that's Ancelotti outside on the right side here. No, that's not him. Who is that? Well, anyways, on the right side of the field, the Detroit Lions edge player is going to have to account for Aaron Jones. And so what has to happen here? You have a slip call between the right guard and the right tackle. And all we have to do, because the right tackle, if he's going to slip to 55, you're not in any real hurry here because the quarterback's got to get the ball and run with it, Okay. So we don't need to pass him up. We don't need to make this easy for uh, Aiden Hutchinson, who's you know arguably their best player on defense. But we kind of do that. We just give a hand here. For, and for what, I'm not quite sure. But now you've put John Runyon Jr. in a bad spot because Aiden Hutchinson's job is to step down and take the B-gap. Now he's going to play leverage of the B-gap. Okay? It's not like he's trying to go through John Runyon to the A-gap. He's trying to step into that B gap and then now take leverage on the B gap. So they run the slip. This, we call this a slip between the right guard and right tackle and right uh, right guard, right tackle. And it's, instead of going through that player, so the guy spikes, right? He's going laterally. He's weak. You get your second step in the ground. You strike inside foot, inside shoulder, inside hand. You turn his body. And now John Ray Jr. can run this guy into the end zone, run him to the sideline. But now Aiden Hutchinson is kind of in the spot he wants to be. Even though you don't see him right here, he's already recoiling off. He's going to end up making the play on Jordan Love. This is unfortunate, not because John Rand Jr. isn't adequate. Um, you know, if he was an absolute bulldozer unit, 340 pound guard, maybe he gets this block. But Zach Tom can help him with this situation because 55 is not making this play. If I go back here a sec. 55 is not making this play from there if you just hang on because you're already on the two. Right here, you don't have to shut the door. You can keep pressing and pressing and pressing, and all you got to do is take the wind out of that guy's sails. That's all you had to do. So, unfortunate. And I think that's it, really, for the game. So when you look at what's going on, it's not necessarily that, listen, you can, I, you can watch other games and you go, okay, or you, you can run more RPO. Um, you can run some more under center stuff. Listen, when they, when they pull, first of all, I think you're giving away some information by formation. I might be grasping it. But this is the kind of stuff that we looked at. This is the kind of stuff when I was in, when, when I was in Carolina with like the, the number one defense in the league, number two defense in the league, this is what they looked at. Right. So we, we, we all shared notes. And so 
you might be giving away some information with the tight end position and whatnot, whether you think that's important or not. It's just a way that the defense knows how to play certain things. So it puts you at a natural disadvantage when you're trying to create a natural advantage because you're running a lot of the same stuff. Now, we didn't look at all the passing plays off of that. Fair enough. Okay. And so that's always the answer. Well, this guy tips his stance. Well, uh, it's okay because we don't know when we're doing play action. Well, the tight end's showing that, well, it doesn't matter because we can run the keep off that. I'm always like, listen, I'm always going to run this now. If I'm the defensive end on the hipped off tight end that's, you know, that shows that it's going backside, I'm going to run that same thing every time against that, ta that tackle. I'm going to run right into him, and I can work off now. I have a better rush angle now anyways. So you, 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 to me, you're putting me in a better position, but that's just me. Backside stuff, you can tell, too, the way they're going to close down, et cetera. It just gives you an alert, right? It gives you something to think about. You're not coming in there with a blank state if you're the defenders. But really what it comes down to is footwork and execution. You see a number of times where on the bring it call, we got guys turning their bodies to the sidelines. We got guys standing straight up, arms extended, taking it right in the chest. We saw that a number of times. You see on the last play on the goal line, it's like you can hang on that guy, secure the first player, get to the second player. I think if there's a motto or a, a mantra that you want to use with this team, it would be like, stay square to the line of scrimmage. Stop turning your shoulders, whether you're B blocking, down blocking, deuce blocking, whatever you're doing, unless you're the puller, stay square to the line of scrimmage. Because if you stay square to the line of scrimmage, now we can push forward. We can always hang on. And if a guy hang on the deep, the, the, the down lineman until we rise up to the linebacker. And if we do rise up to the linebacker, or if the linebacker shoots at us, well, now we can adjust but we can just with our shoulder pad square and give the running back an opportunity to be successful. And I think the most obvious last thing is Ellen Jenkins isn't there right now. You saw a couple of times with Royce, but it happens with everybody. You get stuck with your backside in the hole. You get stuck with your ass in the hole. You do that because you're not doing a, jo a good job of punching, extending, and then running your feet. The biggest thing you can do, again, is not get your, your body towards turned towards the sideline. You want to stay square to the, the end zone. You want to stay parallel with the with, with the sideline not perpendicular to it because if you do that with your shoulder pads now you're really given you're able to fight pressure either way with the defender you can try to press vertically will put them in a precarious situation and you're given the opportunity for a running back so it's footwork it's body positioning more than anything else we can talk about all the other oh, i don't like this scheme i don't like that scheme if you get your footwork right you get your body positioning right and you try to finish through the whistle a little bit more strain a little bit more and then communicate a little bit more which was one of the things we talked specifically about in the preview show for the lions is are we going to be able to deal with their stunts and dogs their blitzes and, and all the movement that they do up front because it will give you opportunities the answer was no we didn't do a good job of communicating we saw the bring it play we didn't do a, a good job on, on some of the backside stuff the backside hinge the backside back block those things are something that need to be communicated with confidence and then repeat it. It should be like chattering monkeys up, up front. Everybody's talking, blah, blah, blah. Oh, there's always something coming out of your mouth. You're always bringing in information from your, your trusted teammates. You got to build that up over time. I don't know where they're at with it right now. From that game alone, it didn't look like it was great. From the season, 3.3 yards of carry like we talked about. Not fantastic, but certainly stuff to work on. You have a long week now. Hopefully they're working on it. We'll see against the Raiders, Max Crosby and company. I'm sure they'll be ready to play. So we'll do a preview show later on in the week. The show is sponsored by BetOnline AG. If you're enjoying these shows, if you like this information, just hit that subscribe button, leave your comments for it. There's a lot to learn as a player, as a as a coach, a staff member, and also you know as, as a casual observer and a fan from watching the tape and just understanding what they're trying to accomplish versus what's actually coming out in reality. So hope you like this stuff. Leave me some comments, and uh, we will definitely get into a little bit of the Max Crosby versus Zach Tom stuff at the end of the week. Thanks, guys.